Good afternoon, Sir Talk to Buy here with another Substance Painter tutorial. I know it's been a year since I've done one of these, and I think it's about time I do a new one. So last time I showed you all how I texture rocks, and I do want to point out in the last video I used metallic and I've been informed I should not. Thank you all for leaving comments on that and I have been improving. So in this one here, we won't be needing any metallic whatsoever because this is rock as well. So to start off, I already did the bake with the normal and everything. Pretty simple stuff. You can check out my last tutorial if you have any questions on this. Gonna do what I did last time. Basically take a concrete. Uh, you can get one from the internet. You can make your own substance designer. I believe this one is just something I took off of Substance Share, but I'm not actually using it for anything except for the height and normal. So I just get rid of all of this. For now I'm just going to keep color and keep the roughness and everything. This is a little too big in my opinion. So I'll just go over here, scale it up to like 5. So it gives me a nice concrete normal and height. So I'll turn off the color, rough, metallic, keep the height and normal. If I Think it's a little too intense I could just turn off height keep just the normal or just keep the height but for now I'm gonna keep both then I'll go over here and add a fill color now this is what I actually want to use to texture it so I'm going to select a blue kind of like a dark blue but a light color so something like this over here I think that's pretty good. So call this base color. Just keep things organized. Make sure the metallic is off. Uh, bring down its roughness a bit. So then I'll take an I'll basically duplicate. Go over a little bit of a darker color on the grayish area. And a little too dark so maybe something like that so I'm gonna take a smart mask I'm gonna put it on top of the dark color but I don't like what it did here so instead I'm gonna put the dark color under the light color take the edge rust and put it over the light color so now I have this uh, light on the edge here but I'm still not done I'm gonna add another fill color on top gonna make it dark on the blue spectrum here. Now with this fill here, I'm gonna just bring some dirt over onto it on there so it adds a little bit of variation. And then I'll just play with the colors some more. All right, now that I'm pretty satisfied with the color of the bricks, I want to make the lines in between them more noticeable and make it actually look like they're separated, not just one giant mass. So what I'm going to do is, after putting everything in its own uh, layer, or folder, sorry, folder, I'm just going to do a fill color, make it completely black. I'm going to keep the roughness just so it's easier to see. Then what I'm going to do is a bit mask ambient occlusion but as you notice it's not really doing what I want it to if anything it's just uh, blocking that out if you push C you can actually go to the mask well it's already set up for mask for me so what I'm going to do is instead invert it and but still uh, still if you push M it's not really that noticeable so what I'm going to do is click this little wand and bring a levels to it. Push C so that it's more noticeable. And I'm going to really crank up the white by playing around with the levels. If I push M, there you go. But it doesn't look quite right yet. So just go back to the color and bring down the metallic all the way or you, you can just turn it off it depends on what you want to do if you want to keep that or not 
and you can also play with the height so you can make it a little bit more pronounced that's a little too intense so it's really just playing around with the levels getting what you want <clears throat> it also helps with adding shadows making them stronger etc in any figure then there's another technique I do where I add another fill color I'm going to make it just red for now so it's easy to see bring uh, down its uh, roughness another bit mask but instead I'm going to do curvature all right now after adding the bit mask with the curvature you see what it's doing if you push C you can see the mask a little bit more I want to get rid of this gray here so I'm going to add again levels levels is your best friend but not fill levels and just press C so you can see it oh let's go back here to mask and then just play around with the mask essentially get rid of that gray <clears throat> now you don't want the red I, it just makes it easier to see you can pick any color honestly but what I'm going to do is turn off the color and I'm just going to turn up the roughness just a bit so it adds a little bit of rough on the edges you can do it either way take away roughness add roughness but I'm just gonna play around with the levels until I get what I want so that's pretty good it breaks up the surface a bit now I'm going to do one last thing to make this a little bit more interesting and it's going to use ma uh, use my own custom mask so I'm gonna add another fill I'm gonna keep it white I'm gonna pick a really high roughness so I can see it a little bit better and I'm just going to add a black mask oops not a bit mask a black mask got rid of it I could paint it on there but instead what I'm going to do is go to oops click the black mask go over here and do a add fill go to grayscale and I'm going to pick a good grunge that would do good for this so uh, this grunge is pretty good you push C you can kind of see some warping because of the way I did my UVs not a big deal you can just go over to the rotation and just fix that up I'm more uh, more wanting to get it like that so I'm not pretty so I'm just going to play around with the scale something like so then I'm going to take a levels of course play around with the levels something like that okay that like that that's good so if I go over here kinda see what I'm doing breaks it up a bit but don't worry I'm gonna do something even cooler if I take another fill and go over to the grayscale here and throw something like oh I don't know uh, you can also just paint it if you want this on certain areas but I kinda like just using masks that's kinda my thing uh, let's just use this right here rotate it as well uh, that's not a good one let's pick something like uh, okay that's pretty good so then just rotate it mess with its scale that's pretty good so now what I'm going to do with this is I'm gonna go over here and do multiply so as you can see oh, not multiply sorry not multiply subtract so it kind of cuts into it, breaks it up, kind of this uh, pretty randomized texture which works great with organic stuff. Don't worry about that seam, especially the way I'm going to use this in my scene so it doesn't really matter. If I go to M, push M to go back to the material. I can go over here and then just get rid of the color 
Oh, now you see this uh, roughness. I can do. Let's just play around with the roughness, something like that. And then what I can also do, which is great that I love doing, is go to the height, kind of cut into it a little. Boom. Changed up the texture a bit. You can still mess with the colors down here. I should have organized this a bit better, but yeah, if I don't like this or someone tells me they don't want it that way, if I was making this for someone, I can just change it very easily. Any of these colors. And it's still procedurally generated. Best part is, if I want to, I can go over here, go to my grunge, and just uh, randomize and change it up until I get what I want. Uh, thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And the next tutorial I'll do with this when I have a chance is I will show you how to fix seams and everything. I'm going to still use this. It's not really that noticeable, but in the next video, I'll show you how to get rid of seams in Substance Painter. Thank you. Have a nice day.